to something that's not that phenomenal. <laughs> you know, my New England Patriots, man, I mean, listen, we the, the tides have turned dramatically. And I think the each week that we've talked about them, it has progressively gotten worse. So not just on the field, but also off the field. So um, they lost to Jacksonville 32 to 16 out in London. You know, Drake May, who was the third overall pick, has continued to show promise. So just looking at what he did the week before, so the week before against Houston, he was 20 of 33, 243, three touchdowns, two picks, fumble loss. This week against Jacksonville, he was, is, I forget the numbers off the top 26 of my head. 26 of 37, 276. I mean, well, 276, and then two touchdowns. Two oh, yeah, two touchdowns, right? So just... You know, from from last week this week, just where, where do where do you where do you see his growth? Where do you see um, him go going, going forward? I mean, despite the loss, I think Drake may played good in both games, and I think he played well, better at the Jacksonville game. Quite frankly, I don't yes. think. I mean, yes. I think your defensive linemen were like blocking sleds out there. I think your offensive yes. linemen couldn't create a lane for someone to run in worth a worth a fucking shit. Really? Uh, I think the linebackers couldn't like tackle effectively and there was a lot of missed tackles drake may i thought to me the stats are a little bit of a step back a tiny slight step back from his debut but in a game going that badly to still be a bright spot i think is yeah. impressive right. um i think he might be a pretty decent qb right to be totally honest with you he completed half his under pressure throws and one of them for a touchdown i think that says a lot about I mean, a rookie QB with a ton of fucking pressure in his face. I don't know if I've seen that go well at, that many times, to be honest. And I and it it went all right for him. I mean, not you know, right. not amazing. He he wasn't out there like prime Russell Wilson, just like dodging two guys and and making the play. Like, all right, there's no point in blitzing him. But I thought he performed pretty well if you look at those numbers. Yeah. Behind the line, ten out of ten for fifty-seven yards and a touchdown. Right, so. With time, with efficient play calling, with good moments, he can make plays happen, but also under pressure. 25 yards, or sorry, 20 yards plus downfield, um, three for five for 87, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, you're looking at these sort of key numbers in a game where the fucking world is falling apart around you, right? And you're losing to one of the worst teams in the NFL, and you're in London, and there's a lot of eyeballs on it, despite like the different time or whatever. It's still because it's the not international game. A lot of people watch it, and he's still making some pretty grown up throws and not getting too rattled and using his physicality. He only had 18 rushing yards, but he used his physicality in the pocket. It's you know it was sort of what I was prepared to do for Caleb if if the Bears season wasn't going according to plan. It was just going to be to watch his mechanics, watch his. Mm. ability to sort of try to keep calm, try to keep the O-line with him, try to keep the team with him, see the mechanics of the throws. Is he making the right throws at the right times? There's ways to outperform your own shitty team and win games. He didn't do that. That would have been asking a lot of a rookie, but I, don't know, I still saw a lot that I like. You know, I think a really bright spot of that position is more than a lot of teams have been. Yeah, no, that, and that, I think that's spot on. I think that he... Definitely improved from the Texas game to, to Jacksonville. Um, you know, the Texans had done pretty well against quarterbacks all year uh, that they, then they played against. So um, he had one of the better performances against them uh, so far this season. So I, I don't want to take that lightly. But yeah, um, to not, I mean, he came close to making some mistakes Sunday. So don't, don't get me wrong, but uh, the stat sheet won't show that. So, um, but so again, I mean, he's. Right, he's you, you know, know we're basically in week two of his NFL career. Well, exactly. That's so, so like, but, you know, spot. yeah, right. But I'll say, but didn't did lose any fumbles. You know, didn't lose a fumble. He, you know, he was a strip sack. So it's like that. Once again, that's the improvement. stuff that happens to rookies, right? Right. You know, yeah, exactly. So it's like for him to make the reads that he's making. Shout out to Chase Daniel. Uh, shout out to Daniel Lasky as well, who. They've given great breakdowns on how Drake may read certain offenses, I mean, certain defenses, and it's finding, you know, the hot route, which is basically, you know, the out route. So whether that's a, a receiver running across the field on a cross route, whether it's a running back running out to the flat, he's finding those guys. So once again, it is okay at times to be a check down Charlie, and, you know, because that saves you from turning the ball over. And instead of it being third and nine, you're now with a third and four. Fine. Totally get that. But yeah, like I said, overall pleased with him. I think that he does well. 
you know, going into this week as well. We'll, we'll speak about that, you know, late, late, later on. But I, I want to shift gears to to the coach because, yeah. you know. Positive section over. Yeah. Well, I've, well, I've, look at, I mean, phew, um, there, there's been so much that's gone on from when, uh, you know, Mayo got hired to now. Um, obviously, you know, just a quick backstory. He's, he's essentially been the heir apparent to Bill really the last five seasons. You know, he had a chance to go to Carolina. You know, Robert Kraft had, you know, pleaded for him not to go, brought him back, whatever. Made him the first African-American head coach in Patriot history. So, yes, in that regard, great. He, he made history. Since that week one win, they have lost six in a row. The comments are flying from the team. The comments are flying from the media. The comments are flying from... Oh, he needs to get a handle on that stuff. Yeah, so that's what I want to get into. So just... Do you do you think he's essentially lost the locker room? And then just, you know, what what are your thoughts on the report saying that it's not a guarantee that he's here beyond this year? I mean, I, I saw a rumor that he was gonna get fired this week. You know, yeah. I, I don't I, dude, I don't know. Crazy. I mean I wouldn't do I wouldn't do that personally. You know, I th- I've heard all I've heard all manner of opinions on this. So when that happens, speculation. I've heard all manner of speculation on this, right, over the last week. I'm just plugged into Boston media as much as I'm a, as I'm a Bears fan. The the Boston media thing is still just like sort of intrinsically in my algorithm, right? I've heard we're we're in for three years of Mayo, and there's nothing anyone can do about that. It's going to be terrible. We, you know, this is what's going to happen. And I've heard he's getting fired this week. So, who, you know, I I bet this is all just speculation. I don't think anyone has any cold hard facts, especially you know, say what you will about the organization. Now they've always been a pretty tight ship as far as things getting out there of any real consequence now in saying that mayo seems to have a really big learning curve with how to handle the media to come out and say we just have a soft team this is a team full of soft guys to then have belichick i mean i don't think this is doing them any favors to have belichick on fucking mcafee every week just looking over their shoulder being like well my defense was the best defense in the on the run in the nfl and it's not even a good impression of him because if i was to do an impression of him the fucking listeners would fall asleep so it's it, I am I don't know who looked at that guy and was like we need to get that personality on every podcast but sure do you I guess it it can't be helpful for him and I do feel for him in that way but man some of those decisions we need to start with the media stuff you can't mm-hmm. come out and call them a soft football team and then backtrack you can't right. you just can't right. I mean okay. there's there's a way to coach like that and you got if you want to be a hard nosed coach be a hard nosed coach if you mm-hmm. act like that and then they can smell blood. Then you start to, as you said, potentially lose the locker room. Now, I don't know what your feelings on if he's lost the locker room or not. I know we are just speculating, but every time I've ever seen a coach act like this, the answer retrospectively on if they've lost the locker room is yes. (laughs) So it seems like, yeah, it seems like maybe they've just sort of, I mean, not as bad as the Saints coach. What's his name? Dennis. Oh, Dennis Allen. Dennis Allen. They were given upon him on the field, right? So it could be worse. They were on the field going like, what are we doing? Like looking over and being like, what's going on? They have lost all respect for him. I'm surprised to see it happen this early considering his pedigree, his name, what he means to that organization. But yeah, yeah. I mean, it, okay. it doesn't look good. Yeah, I mean. It's, it's the thing is, is like he tried to build a hard-nosed defensive culture from the ground up. Yeah. And it seems like the whole defense has quit on him. I don't know about the offense. The defense has. But this, this, this is why, and this is why, and they, you know, you know, you guys, you guys got on me about this to an extent. You know, more I so never got on you, Ray. I never do. Yeah. I always think that you're right. Not, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to generate content. You didn't rag on me, but I'm saying like you, you wanted me to have a different perspective. But this is this is stuff like this is why I felt like this is not the beginning of the rebuild because regardless of saying that oh, Bill's gone, Brady's gone, was Mayo not in the building the last five years? Was the Marcus Cumberson in the building the last five years? Yes. So when you still have God, he said that we're a part of that, that foolishness, right? And then they're trying to implement some things that's new, but also still trying to hold on to what he did without having to cachet of what he does. Of course, it was going to go crazy. So that's, that's another reason why, like, this is not year one, because this is a continuation of what's been going on the last few years with the exception of 2021. So, if you're gonna clean sure. house for real, if you're gonna clean house for real, get rid of everybody. Yeah, we yeah. had this conversation, I think, in the preview, 
or maybe yeah. week one when I came on the week one Pat's show. Yeah. And I, think I said something along the lines of like, well, I mean, it's all new stuff there, you know, like this, that, and the other, like they have, you know, they're moving out all the furniture from Belichick's office and now it's Mayo's office. And you said something along the lines of like, yeah, but they're only moving it from down the fucking hall. You know, it's like there's the, if you're going to come in and build a culture, you're saying, and I think I understand what you're saying now, sort of watching this Pat's team sort mm-hmm. of implode, whatever. And you're just going to have a more more insightful perspective on it than me because it's not my team, right? Yes. You're, you're saying we should have given up on the Patriot way when we gave up on Bill. Yes. And you yes. didn't. Exactly. Right. Exactly. So you're saying because it was so successful and because of how much we all bought into, mm-hmm. that's a system in New England. You plug guys right. in. It's a system. You do this. You do that. And how much everybody thought if you just plugged anyone in because of the Matt Castle season to a certain extent, because of what Jimmy Garoppolo was able to do uh, what one or two times, people thought, oh, you can just plug anybody in there. Then Tom Brady's the system QB. Well, it turns out, yeah. no, he was, you know, the GOAT. And the Patriot way did work for a while, but it, that doesn't mean that it's not great. It just means that football moves on. Right. And it, but it's the same thing. The Patriot way really has not involved a modern offense since modern offenses became a thing. And, right. I, and I think that's a big yeah. part of it. it. Exactly. So it's just like, the thing is, you needed an offensive-minded coach, and you never got yeah, that. Yeah, you did. You did. So you, you can't. You know, you would you not take Vrabel like this week, though? Well, no, of course. A lot of people wanted Vrabel, you know, before. That seemed like a no-brainer to me, to be honest. Well, yes, but the, 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 the thing is with Vrabel, you know, because it had been different to an extent only because he wasn't, he was just a player. He wasn't a part of the coaching tree. So it's yeah, like, but that, but then he like, changed the culture then, right? Right. It, 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 exactly. But that's Rabel wasn't doing Patriot culture down. It took all the way through down in Tennessee. He was doing my Grable no. culture, if you ask. Right. Me. He was but like what? a prototypical Dan Campbell down there. He was doing, yeah, he almost yeah, achieved exactly. that, but, he, but not exactly. quite, you know? Yep. No, so, so, totally true. So, and that, that's the thing. So it's, it's like, for me, I'm not in the business of like, yo, let's let's go to year three or year four to see where, where we are. Um, and I think about situations in the NFL. I think about I think about Nick Saban when he got to the NFL, how bad yeah. that was. I think about Bobby Petrino, who literally took the midnight train to Georgia and got and got up out of there. You remember the Super Bowl that worked last night saying? Was it halftime? She did the halftime show? Yeah. Did you hear what happened to her backstage? No. She walked off stage. And someone was like, Gladys, do you want to stick around and see uh, the rest of the game? And she said, I can't. I'm leaving on the midnight train in Georgia. Love that. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Continue. <laughs> Love that. But yeah, so I'm, I'm just like, <laughs> like that. So there's, there's instances where Jim, Jim, I think about Jim Mora Jr. Not senior, but Jr. Yeah, Jr. Jim Mora Jr. Another one. Like, I th- there's, there's cases in the NFL where it just doesn't work. And that's okay. Like, you don't need... 20 to 25 games to figure out that is it not. couldn't be more okay for you guys right now if you make the right decision over the course of the next mm-hmm. nine months right if you over the next nine months you do all the right things you're mm-hmm. in great shape you take the two or three right if you either have carolina i'd say probably carolina is going to be probably ahead of you right lose out get the number mm-hmm. two take that tackle that you want right now you mm-hmm. have your fr- franchise QB and a guy who can protect his blind side. Right. Wow. Guess what? You have something that, I don't know, roughly 13 other teams don't have. Like right there, right off the bat. Mm-hmm. You switch out the coaching staff. You do what you want to do, which is fully clean house, fully change cultures, mm-hmm. like fully change cultures. Bring in a guy. You want Ben Johnson? You don't really want to play. Man, I, I, would, I would love Ben. I'm aggressive. I don't, I don't think that he's going to leave Detroit, but just for hypothetically speaking, yeah, if, if Ben Johnson was available, absolutely. In a heartbeat. Okay. Really. Okay. So say you get him or say you get somebody that like emerges over the course of this season doing good stuff in some sort of coaching tree, right? Mm-hmm. As long as you've made the decision to clean house, you're good, right? Because you have Drake May. You potentially have a blindside blocker for him for 11 years. You have decent guys on defense already that you could lock up, Christian Gonzalez, et cetera, et cetera. And you have the most cap space. You have the most cap space. Your footballing future is not decided until, right. until you know who they're giving the keys 
to the treasure chest that the New England Patriots have. That's mm. what that's what it's going to be. If it's it's I I think you're just saying, and I think Mike's saying it shouldn't be this regime. You guys, I mean, you tell me your instincts are going to be more honed on this. Well, stuff. I mean, well, I said, well, well, Mike Mike's hell bent on it being year one of the rebuild, but we we v I vehemently disagree about that. I do. I'm sorry. I just but Mike was like, saying over the weekend, he, you know, he might be bad. So maybe it's yeah. time to maybe it's time to. But you have the luxury of calling this a, a tank year. You know, you could look back at it and be like, wow, Kraft's a fucking genius. He promised Mayo the job, knew Mayo was going to fuck it up, got this pick, installed Johnny Coconuts as the oh, GM, right, but, oh, but, you know, whatever. But and then, then on, bang, on, you, have, you, have, you have such a springboard right now. Yeah. You on, could be on, the next. On, on the flip side of that, though, and I, I said this a few weeks ago, because, and was I did, you know, we talked about the whole black coach thing. If he's look, if he's able, or if he desires another job at some point, he looks, he looks to move on. This will always be a step against him, always, and that's the unfortunate part. I think about, I think about Jim Caldwell, who did well in Detroit and got and got got phased out. No, it's um, true. Well, your 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 guy Lovey Smith, like Steve Wilkes in, in Arizona. Um, I think Tom the guy Bowles. with the light. I was just I was just yeah. gonna say I think yeah. the lightning rod guy this year is Todd Bowles. I, yeah, every so, time yeah. every time well, the camera cuts so, to him, yeah, every so, time the camera cuts to Todd yeah. Bowles, I feel like it's being wielded by a guy in a MAGA hat. I'm like, dude, your angle is condescending, bro. <laughs> like, yeah, stop so, trying so, to tell so, folks so, like that. Yeah, so there was again. So I'm just like, I don't want, I don't want him to be exiled in that way. So that's a part of it too. But also the same at the same time, you know, I just want to see the team improve and. They haven't improved since week one at all, except for them making the decision to get Jacoby to reset up out of there. And in the uh, quarterback play, yeah. yeah, I mean the quarterback play has improved, and like that's yeah. the big thing, you know. I, I Drake May did sixteen things that I never once saw Mac Jones able to do, and I just think that that's such yeah. a big upside. For yeah, him. I mean running running for a first down consistently if he needed to, you know, the making certain- the right plays, dude. Just but yeah, but just just just, just certain throws like the the throw to Booty, the throw to Hunter Henry. Hunter Henry looks like a beast out there, bro. Yeah, I mean, well, Hunter I mean, just you know, he Hunter Henry was good, and he was good in L.A. He was just like I say, just well, it was still San Diego when he was there, but just that, but he was good in L.A. So it's just like, yeah. bro, like to to get him back to where he was is great. Austin Hooper blows, so it, it is what it is. Yeah, but uh, you got that Douglas. He's pretty. He's yeah, probably yeah, pop, yeah, Pop is good. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, is legit. He just needs to get a little experience under his belt. Stop coughing the fucking football up, right? So, I I don't I don't have the same amount of patience. So I'm I'm already out I, <laughs> because it, it, up here it, it reminds me of the Kelly Harry 2.0, and I, I just I can't. I don't know. I just I, I can't. I just He's I got just, a lot more physicality than the Kelly Harry had. You know? But I'm I'm just like bro. Like you you can't you can't say I got the best hands in the league and. You drop you drop more calls than a cell phone. I just okay. I, I I just it, it's no no no. I just I'm sorry. I mean it's a skill. It's an underrated skill. It's not it, I mean, look, look, literally Drake May is literally hitting him for those that's watching on the YouTube version. He's, he's uh, oh, listen to the audio because you can't see what I'm doing with my hands. But he's he's literally throwing it. He's catch, trying to catch it in his hands every time, and it literally goes in and out. And I'm not talking about a California burger. What the fuck? Right, man. <laughs> First, I'm, I'm, almost, I'm upset, Dave. And I, I need him. I need him to be better. Um, I think he can be better. But I, I want to see if Javon Baker could do something. I want to see if Kendrick Moore could get back to what he was before he got hurt. So there's a lot of question marks that's still on there. And yes, I get that the team is not going to be a double-digit win team. I've given up on that. But no, you, you should want pick, you want pick not be... Team. Yeah, you, yeah, you should not be, but the goal is you, you should you should be looking to go lose 12, 13 times either. So I don't know. Like I said, I'm just I'm just in between on that. I'm just like man, like it's always something. But can I say you know, something else on the? Can I say yeah. something on the black coaches thing? Yep. I, I, since we've been talking about that, I think you fully radicalized me because I was just delving deep into the internet comments section after Caleb started playing mm-hmm. uh, good football, right? And I was just thinking to myself, you know, his level of scrutiny over the for over like if you're really gonna have the balls to just start talking shit about a QB after two weeks of playing in the NFL, but you gave Trevor Lawrence two fucking years, mm-hmm. right? Like I was re- fully radicalized. Like after we beat the Jags, I was like, 
every single person needs to take a long look in the mirror because you gave that dude every fucking chance. Captain yep. fucking long hair down in the bayou, white as yep. the fucking day is long, and you were on my guy two fucking games in. Like, yep. I, first of all, Caleb's talent level and what he was being, how he was being touted up here. Pretty high for Trevor Lawrence, but not the way they were talking about Caleb Williams, right? So I get it. Like, I understand that the scrutiny is what it is. I fully believe anytime people say there's intrinsic bias deeply baked into the 